I want to welcome everybody who is joining us live online right now. Thank you so much for participating in Activation Church Online. If you're ever in the area, we would love for you to stop by. But while you're online, give us a thumbs up, click the notification bell, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. This morning, I want to start off with three passages of Scripture. The first one is going to be 700 years before Jesus enters into human history as a man. Now, we understand that Jesus has always existed. He's always been. He's always been God. But there was a period of time where he said, I'm going to come off of my throne and step down into human history. I'm going to take on flesh and live just like you have to live. I'm, I'm going to deal with the stuff you have to deal with. I'm going to deal with the pain. I'm going to deal with the troubles. I'm going to deal with the rejection. I want to know what you are touched with so that I can sympathize with you. It's an amazing thing that Jesus did in this Christmas story. And so the, the first passage is 700 years before he enters human history. The second passage is right after he steps into human history. And the third passage is at the end of his life before he returns back to the Father. And so if you have a Bible... Um, you can try to keep up. It's going to be hard because we're going to go really hard, really fast. The scriptures will be on the screen. I would recommend just take a note, go back, listen to the podcast, so that, that way you're not spending the whole day flipping, okay? So Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. I want you to personalize that this Christmas season, that Jesus came for me. Turn to the person next to you and say, Jesus came for me. Now turn to the person on your other side who's your second choice and say, I guess Jesus came for you too. It's really easy for us to get caught up in verses like John three sixteen, where it says, for God so loved the world. And we get behind that, like, oh, God loves the world. But we, we miss the fact that I am a part of the world that he loved. You need to know that Jesus loves you and Jesus came for you, for unto us, or I would say for unto me, a child is born, to me a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called, watch this, Wonderful Counselor. You need somebody to talk to? He's a wonderful counselor, and he doesn't charge. And he doesn't get tired of listening. And there's no, like, one-hour time limit. And he's got better answers and solutions than any other counselor. He's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, everlasting Father. Here's what I want you to see. He is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. His peace never runs out. Everything else on this earth will die out. Everything else in this life will cease, but his peace will continue. Luke 2, this is right after his birth. Luke 2, verse 8 says, And in the same region there were, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. This is for everybody. But verse 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Somebody say, on earth. There are some things that Christ has made available that you don't have to wait until heaven for. I want to say that again. You don't have to wait to get to heaven to receive everything that Jesus has made available to you. There are some things that are for here for right now. As a matter of fact, his goodness and mercy are for here right now. His love is for here right now. His peace is for here right now. I don't need peace when I'm in heaven and everything's peaceful. I need peace when, when crap is hitting the fan. The 11 o'clock service may get a different version of that, but right now I'm going to keep it soft because y'all are so sleepy. When mess is hitting the fan is when I need 
peace. And he says that peace is on earth. Through Jesus, that peace is on earth among those with whom he is pleased. Now let's go to the third passage. John 14, verse 27. Before Jesus is crucified, he meets with his disciples and he's telling them some things. And he gets to this point in verse 27 where he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Think about that. I'm going, but as a part of your inheritance, I'm going to leave my peace. His peace belongs to you. Last week we talked about the fact that peace is a part of the package. He says, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give you to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So right, right there we see that Jesus brought peace. Jesus left peace, and his peace never ends. If you're taking notes, you can write that down, or you can put that in the chat. Jesus brought peace. Jesus left peace, and his peace has no end. How many of you in here are old enough to remember uh, manual windows in your car and no air conditioning? Y'all remember that? I was kind of born on the tail end of that where that was still an option. And if you wanted something else, you had to pay an upgrade fee. And, and so a lot of people, since they had no air conditioning, they had to ride around with the window down. And it would take you 30 minutes to crank the window down for a five-minute drive. And if you wanted the option of air conditioning and powered windows, you had to pay extra. It, it wasn't a part of your package. That, that's what I'm wanting you to see here today is now that when you go buy a car, like you don't have to like check that option. I don't even know if they offer cars without AC anymore. I don't know if they offer cars without powered windows or powered locks anymore. You know why? Because it comes with the package. It's no longer optional. It comes with the package. The reason I'm telling you that is because your salvation includes your peace. That's what we talked about last week is peace is a part of the package. Peace is a part of your inheritance. And his peace, the peace he gives to you that belongs to you, no one can take away from you. Your peace cannot be taken away, but it can be given away. This is important. No one has the right to come take your peace or to steal your peace, but you can forfeit your peace. Several years ago, my wife and I were going to visit a friend of ours who lives on the lake, and we packed up all of our bags, and we were ready, man. We're going to spend two days on the lake. It's going to be nice, and I pack up all my stuff, get everything. I'm the type of person, like, I, I like to have everything that I need. I mean, I've got my antacids in there because I know, like, if I have acid reflux, I want to be, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to go to the Walgreens. I want it to be there. So I had everything packed and ready put all the bags, I stationed them by the door so that we can just get out, grab the bags and go. And something came up and my wife was like, hey, will you go do this? I can't remember what it was now. But I said, yeah. She said, I'll, I'll get the bags. My first mistake was believing her. <laughs> <clears throat> so we, we got about 30 minutes from the house and I said, where's my bag? Now, I blame myself because I should have asked that question when I got in the car, but I waited 30 minutes. Where's my bag? And she said, oh, I left it. Well, I'm not turning around. I'm ready to get to the lake. And I know there's a Walmart near his house, so I'm like, I'm going to go to the Walmart. Only problem is, this is the end of the season. Like, this is the end of the summer. And so the options are, like, very limited. And so the only swim trunks that they had in the store were either way too small or way too big. And I thought, you know what's better than too small? too big. So I, I bought a pair of swim trunks that were 12 sizes too big. You know why? Because I can strap them things down. They got strings. I'll tie it off. I'll strap it down. I'll be good to go. For my choice in shirt, I got this button up like Tommy Bahama knockoff. But instead of it being like palm trees, it was beer logos. <clears throat> and and it, didn't, it didn't match the shorts. Okay. Now, I did have options and hats, but I'm thinking, I've got these incredible shorts. I've got this beer logo button-up shirt. I can't just have any hat, so I got like a straw, 
like Margaritaville style hat. I was, I was a sight to behold, but nobody's going to see me. I'm going to my friend's house. It's all good. I'm going to float around in the lake. Nobody even know. Until he says, I want to teach you how to water ski. <laughs> I said, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's ski. And so I get in the water. I grab a hold of the rope. And as he begins to go, I start feeling this extreme pressure and resistance from the water, which is normal. If you've ever water skied before, you understand that there's going to be some pressure and some resistance that you have to fight before you get up on top of the water. That's normal. But I'm fighting this pressure and this resistance that I expected. But what I did not think about was the shorts that were 12 sizes too big. And as he's pulling me, my shorts start to come down. So now I've got the pressure, I've got the resistance, and I've got the distraction of my shorts coming down. And uh, I didn't want to spend the rest of the weekend in jail for uh, public indecency. And so what I did was I let go of the rope. The only thing that could get me out of the water, I let go of. The only thing that could break me through the resistance, I let go of because of the pressure and the distraction. Sometimes in life, what happens is we deal with some pressure and resistance and distractions that cause us to shift our focus. And what we do is we let go of our peace. We let go of the only thing that can pull us through the crisis. It wasn't taken away from us. The rope was not taken from me, I let go of it. And so what I want to deal with today is how to hold on to your peace, how to protect your peace, because no one has a right to take it away from you. I want to say it again, no one has a right to take your peace away from you. If your peace is gone, it's because you have let it go, you have forfeited it. My wife cannot have my peace, my kids cannot have my peace, my problems cannot have my peace, my bills cannot have my peace, hello? Nothing can have my peace. I'm going to hold on to it, and I am going to protect it because it is mine. Amen. Tell the person next to you, say, it is mine. We talked about that last week. Peace is a part of package. It's a part of your inheritance. It belongs to you, and no one has a right to take it away from me. I mean, how many of you would allow someone to break into your house and just steal all your stuff while you sit on the couch and go, hey, how, how you doing? Not in Paulton County. I guarantee you. Maybe in New York or out in California, one of, those, one of those states, you just let somebody come in and take your stuff, but not in Paulton County. You've got some stuff to defend yourself. I mean, we've got, he just said, see, he'd be getting a lead sandwich. <laughs> I'm assuming that's not you throwing pencils at him. <laughs> I don't get you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, think about all the things that we have and we invest into to protect our property. We invest into insurance. We invest into alarm systems. Some of you have dogs. Some of you have lead pencils that you throw at people. Other, <laughs> others of you have upgraded to, like, guns of some sort. We have all these things in place to protect our stuff. But how many of us have established something to protect our peace? How many of us have a security system in place to protect our peace? What I want you to know is there are some things available for you that will help you protect your peace. That does not mean that your peace will not be tried. That does not mean that your peace will never be challenged. That does not mean you will never get frustrated. That does not mean that you will never have problems. But see, true peace is not the absence of problems, it's the presence of Christ. That's why nothing and no one can take it away from you, because nothing and no one can take Jesus away from you. Nothing can remove his presence from you. But we've got to become aware of this and keep our mind focused on it so that we can protect our peace. So here's the first thing, if you're taking notes, it's this. Guard your heart. Turn to the person next to you and say, guard your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 23, keep your heart, or in other words, guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Think about that verse. Guard your heart 
with all vigilance because from the inside of you, from that inner being, that's, that's what the heart's dealing with. It's talking about your inner being, your mind, your will, and emotions. From that inner person flows the issues of your life. And so if you want good things flowing from you, you've got to make sure that you guard what's happening to you. Now listen, you cannot control what's happening around you. I don't know if any of you are aware of this or not. Do we have any control freaks in the room? I see one. You're going to hate this sermon because you have this much control. Now, you, know, you think you've got a lot of control. You think that you can, you know, manipulate things, but you, you can't. And, and the sooner you learn that, the happier you're going to be in life. You cannot control what happens around you. You cannot control what other people's, people around you do. But you can control what you allow inside of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can't control others' actions. I can't control what's happening in politics. I can't happen, control what's happening with viruses. But I can control what I'm allowing to get inside of me. One night, my wife and I, we were on a cruise ship. And the captain said, we're going to hit a big storm tonight, but we're going to try to power through. That was amazing. Powering through the storm was amazing. And I remember laying in bed that night and rolling and rolling. And I'm not talking about like a little like nudge. I'm talking about like a big roll. And my family's freaking out. I tend to stay calm in those situations. The reason I tend to stay calm in those situations is because I truly do believe that God is in control of my life. And if he chooses to end me in an ocean storm, then so be it. But as long as he's got a purpose for me, I'm going to survive the storm. That's kind of a, a, a different topic. But we're rolling around, and we've got a balcony room. And my, my grandfather and my dad were always the type of people, if it stormed, they wanted to walk out and watch it. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out and watch this thing. And I kid you not, the waves. I mean, I, I tried to videotape it, and the video could not even capture the magnitude of the waves. I mean, when you're going to the side, you're looking down at ocean, and when you look up, all you see is ocean. There was a lot of turmoil around us, but we were okay because what was out there didn't get inside the boat. Are you following that? See, all hell can be breaking out around you, but you can be okay and have peace as long as you don't allow that to get inside of you. You have to guard your heart. If you want to protect your peace, you have to guard your heart. If you want to protect your peace, you have to guard your heart. You can't just allow anything to get inside of you, which means you can't watch everything. You can't listen to everything. You can't pay attention to every social media post. Not if you want to protect your peace. If you want to live without peace and you want to live in, in a state of constant worry, fear, and anxiety, read whatever comes your way. Watch whatever comes your way. Listen to whatever comes your way. But if you want to protect your peace, you've got to guard your heart. A friend of mine who's a minister, back in the 90s, there was a, a war breaking out. And this guy came to one of his services for prayer because he was losing his mind. And the pastor said, well, what's going on? Why are you losing your mind? He said, well, we got this whole shock and awe thing going on. And he said, so I got every television I could. I set it up and I got all the news channels on. He said, I sit there. He said, I drink coffee all day long so I can stay up and watch because I want to wait for shock and awe. Guess what he got? Shock and awe. So the preacher said, oh, I can fix this. He said, you can? He said, yeah, because I know exactly what's wrong with you. He said, what? He said, you got alphabet disease. The guy said, alphabet disease? He said, yeah, F-O-X, C-N-N, A-B-C, <laughs> C-B-S disease. He said, I got a feeling. If you'll turn off the TVs and stop drinking all that coffee, your peace will come back. And sure enough, sure enough, if the... <laughs> If we cut some of the stuff off that we are watching and listening and allowing to fill us, our peace will return to us. And let me say this, that goes for both sides of the aisle. 
Because some of you are very anti-news. You're like, I ain't going to watch the news. It's fake. I know it. (laughs) But then you go and dig up your own version of news, and you allow that to create fear, worry, panic. Are you seeing what I'm saying? (laughs) And anything that produces fear, worry, or panic is not good. Are you following what I'm saying? At some point in time, we've got to filter what we're allowing inside of us. Yes, I do care about what's going on in the world. And yes, I do pray about what's going on in the world. But I'm not going to allow what's going on in the world to get inside of me because I operate in a different kingdom. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. The moment I said yes to Jesus, I shifted from darkness and into light. Things don't work for me the way it works for someone that does not know Jesus. I don't have to worry about things that other people worry about. I know that I can prosper in every season of my life because the Bible tells me so. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible tells me. And so I want to shift my mind and filter what I am allowing inside. The Bible says in Psalm 101 verse 3, I love this verse. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. That is his commitment. He's saying, I've committed myself to not set anything before my eyes that is worthless. What are you feeding yourself with? Is it beneficial or is it worthless? There are television shows that I like that I stopped watching. Not because I'm trying to be holy. I just, one night I was sitting on the couch, I was like, why am I feeding myself with this? It's not adding anything to me. There are bands that I really like. I'm a music guy. I love music. But there are certain, and I'm not, te- I'm not pushing anything on you, okay? I'm not telling you if you play that song backwards, it'll say, Beelzebub is coming to get you. Beelzebub is coming to get you. <laughs> Most of the stuff nowadays, if you play it forward, it'll say, Beelzebub is coming to get you. Beelzebub is coming. <laughs> so I'm not that guy, okay? I'm not that guy. But if I, I, started like paying att- I started paying attention to the lyrics. See, I'm a melody guy. I always liked the melody. I started paying attention to some of the lyrics that I was singing and listening to. And I was like, like no wonder I don't have any peace. <laughs> no wonder. I mean, no wonder so many of these artists commit suicide. Listen to their lyrics. They've been singing about it for years. What you fill yourself with is important. If you want to protect your peace, you've got to guard your heart, you've got to fix your focus, and then you've got to be still. Somebody said be still. Paul says this in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six. It's kind of like a prescription for peace. He says, do not be anxious about anything. That's easier said than done. I want to say that again. That's easier said than done. If if you deal with worry and anxiety, you're not broken. You're human. I want to say that because some people feel like, like you've missed the train because you've got worry and anxiety in your life. But I want you to know that's something that we all wrestle with. And that that's that's why this this sermon is so important about peace. Because we We'll wrestle with it, but we can also overcome it. If God is for you, nothing can be against you. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's keeping the focus back on on Jesus. I'm thankful for what I have. I'm thankful for what he's done. And he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding." will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there be anything of excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Consider what you're filling yourself with. Isaiah 26.3 says, you keep him. Let's talk about God. God keeps him. In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Because this person trusts in you. The place of peace is a place of trust. 
That's why I've got to learn how to be still. Turn to the person next to you and say, learn to be still. There, there's a passage of Scripture, 4610 Psalm, that I, I can still hear my grandfather saying. And there's actually a video on YouTube of him quoting this passage, but he says, be still and know. That's how my grandfather talked. It was much better than me, but he said, be still and know that I am God. Think about that passage. Just first, calm yourself. Relax. Take a breather. That's, that's my translation of it. Chill out. And know that I am God. Be still and know. Be certain. Be assured that I am God, which means Aram is not. See, if I am the God of my life, then I really do need to worry about everything. But if I know that God is God, I can relax because he's really good at his job. See, worry is developed from seeing what is now, but not knowing what is next. Like I I see what's going on now in my life, and I don't know what is next, and so worry is produced. Peace comes when I see what is going on now, but I know who holds what is next. Or you, or you hear what I'm saying? I see what's happening now. I'm not ignoring the crisis. I'm not ignoring the situation. But I know that God holds my future. I know that he has a plan for my life. I know that my days are numbered by him. I know that he even knows how many hairs are on my head or the lack thereof. God is God and he is really good at his job. And if I can just step back and relax in the fact that he is in charge, I can find my peace because he is taking care of me. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna want for anything. He's gonna lead me, he's gonna guide me, he's gonna feed me, he's gonna protect me. God is in control of my life. And that allows me to find peace and comfort in the midst of the storm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. You can have that confidence if God is the Lord of your life. If you are the Lord of your life, you need to hit the panic button. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot be the God of your life and carry peace. Only God can bring peace, and that happens when he sits on the throne of your heart, which means Not only, I I can't just watch whatever I want to watch or listen to whatever I want to listen to. I can't live however I want to live and carry his peace. A lot of the things that steal my peace are the things that I have gotten myself into. Hello? It's the stuff that I did on my own. I made the decision to do it. And it took my peace. But see, I was trying to be the shepherd of my life. I'm still learning this, by the way. When, when I talk to y'all, don't think that I got it all together, because I don't. I mean, I read these passages, and it's like a, it's like a punch in between the eyes, like, because I realize I allow things to take my peace all the time. I step into situations that I allow to take my peace because I'm not consulting God first. God, what is it that you would like for me to do in this situation? Should I purchase this? Should I move here? Should I change this? Are you following what I'm saying? He is a wonderful counselor. I should consult him on a regular basis, even with the small details of my life, because I know if he gives me peace about it, I can step into it and carry peace through it, even if storms come. If he says go or move, I can have peace about it even when the storm comes. This part wasn't planned. But there's a story about Jesus on a boat with his disciples. A storm comes up. Everybody panics except for Jesus. 
He is in the boat asleep. Think about that. The part that we skip over in that story that we need to pay attention to is before they got on the boat, Jesus said we need to cross over to the other side. If God tells you you're going to the other side, then it doesn't matter what you deal with in the middle. You're going to the other side. Jesus had peace and was able to sleep in the storm because he knew he was on a mission and he was going to the other side. I want you to know if God says you're going to make it, you will make it. If he says you're going to go to the other side, you will go to the other side. And so even if the storm is raging, you can have peace and take Take a nap because God is with you and he will bring you through it. Peace. Peace is it's just, it's just knowing that God's with me, that he's ordering my steps. I'm not winging this thing. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not shooting from the hip. My steps are ordered of the Lord. When we decided to build that building, there were a lot of things that came up in my mind. And there were a lot of things like, like where I was like, should we do this? Should we not do this? I mean, that, that's a big decision. And one day I was in prayer. I was, I was right here on that front row on my knees in the building praying. And God reminded me of a dream that he gave me about a year earlier. And as soon as I remembered that dream, which I may share that dream in our first Sunday in there, as soon as I remembered that dream, I had a peace. This has not been an easy process. This has been a long process. It's been going on for almost three years, and we've had all kinds of things pop up. We've had all kinds of unexpected bills pop up. But I've had peace. I've had peace because I know God said do it. You need to know that God is telling you where to go and that he is directing your path. Because if he says do it, you will have peace. But that peace comes from having him in the proper place. You can't lead your life and walk in peace. Not the kind of peace that he gives you. Not an everlasting peace. That comes from following him. Here's your homework. Read Matthew, the sixth chapter, 25 through 33. See what Jesus says. He talks about not worrying, not being anxious. Then he gets down at the bottom. He says, here's what you need to do. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then everything you need will follow after you. If God can take care of the birds, he can take care of you. You can have peace in knowing that God will take care of you because he loves you. And if you'll just seek after him, his peace will chase after you. There are many things in life that we miss out on because we're chasing after it, but we're looking for it in the wrong place. The angel comes and tells the shepherds, you will find a child lying in the manger if you want to find peace you've got to go to the manger you can't just go here and expect to find what you're looking for many times we miss what we need and what we desire because we're looking for it in the wrong place and that's why we don't have peace because we think a relationship will bring peace we think that a new job will bring peace we think that this amount of money will bring peace and I got news for you it won't not lasting peace Lasting peace comes from the presence of God and in knowing that no matter where I go and no matter what I walk through, He is with me and He'll never leave me. God is with you and God is for you. If you're watching online this morning or you're listening to the podcast, I want to pray for you first. And I want you to know that God can be with you in the midst of the trial that you're in right now. It, it may feel like Man, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand why I've got to walk through this. But listen, you don't have to lean on your own understanding. If you'll just trust him, lean into him, he will see you through it. And he'll have the best outcome for it. 
So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would give them peace today, your peace that goes beyond all understanding. Father, fill them with a new sense of joy and hope in this Christmas season. Let them know that you are their God, that you are for them, that you are with them, and that you will help them. In Jesus' name, amen.